What's up guys, Nathan here, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to win every single poker hand, every single time. Let's jump right into this right now. All right guys, so the truth is nobody wins every single poker hand. I hope you already know this, but I'm going to show you in this video my simple five-step process to get you quickly winning much more consistently at the poker tables. Follow these five simple tips and I think you're gonna have a lot more success. All right, so tip number one is to learn a basic, tight, and aggressive strategy, aka tag. Now, I would suggest playing 15% of your hands if you play in a full ring poker game. That means nine or 10 players at the table. And I would suggest playing 20% of your hands if you play in six max. And now I'm gonna put some images on the screen right now so you guys can get an idea of exactly what I'm talking about. So the top 15% of hands in a nine or 10 player table and the top 20% of your hands if you play in a six player game, AKA six max. Now, why do I suggest this? Why do we have such a tight starting hand selection. The reason why, guys, is because you want to have a mathematical advantage going into the hand, and if you only play the strong hands, like I suggest on these charts, you're simply going to have the odds in your favor, which is going to help you win more poker hands. Now, secondly, you need to be heavily biased towards playing the majority of your hands at certain seats at the poker table, specifically the button and the cutoff. And once again, I'm gonna put an image on your screen right now so you understand where those seats are at the poker table. Guys, these are the statistically proven most profitable seats at the poker table because you get to act last on the flop, turn, and river, which is a massive advantage because you get to see what your opponent is going to do first. Information is power in poker, and when you get to see what they do first, you have all the options in the hand. You're in the driver's seat. You can choose to bluff. You can choose to raise. You can choose to just call. You can choose to even fold if you believe that they really do have a strong hand and save yourself money. Now, if you play online poker, you can just use a program like Poker Tracker. I'll have links for that in the description below. And you can actually just filter inside the program yourself and see for yourself that you're winning a lot more from these seats. So of course, logically, it only makes sense to play more hands from those positions. Next, you want to C-bet the flop even when you miss. Now, C-bet stands for continuation bet. Let's run you through an example right here, you raise preflop with ace queen offsuit, you get one color, flop comes down with a 10, seven, three with a diamond club and hearts. We don't hit the flop at all. However, you should make a bet here. We call it continuation bet. You are continuing the aggression that you started before the flop and you're now going to continue to apply that pressure right now on the flop as well. Guys, remember your opponent is going to miss the flop two out of three times in poker. So if we can make a small bet here, even though we don't have much, we can often get them to fold and that's why this is profitable. Now I will say that if you're up against two, three or more callers, if you've got a bunch of callers preflop, I would not suggest making continuation bet here, but I just wanna make that clear against one player, I would suggest making your continuation bet most of the time here. Let's move on to point number two, which is to only play in fishy games. Guys, no more sitting down in random poker games, okay? That is what amateurs do. It's what 90% of poker players do and they wonder why they don't get the results they want in this game. Guys, we need to always remember where the money comes from in poker. It's not by battling other really good players who are watching videos like this, who are studying advanced material. By the way, I would recommend downloading my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below if you want to get my entire strategy to beat games like this. The fishy players that you find at the table are not reading my free poker cheat sheet. They're not studying the game. They're just sitting down, they're splashing around. They're the kind of players that you wanna play against. These are the players that make the large fundamental mistakes. So there needs to always be one player at your table who is limping a lot. That means calling the blind preflop. Even though I didn't include it in this list, I would highly suggest always coming into the hand with a raise. You want to let people know you're serious. Amateur players, fishy players, they tend to come in passively by limping and that's another reason why they don't get success in this game. Fishy players also play a lot of bad hands like 10 
10-6 offsuit, for example, 10 of diamonds, six of clubs. Bad hands that you shouldn't be playing that weren't on the charts that we just discussed. And lastly, these kind of players typically call with anything post-flop, you know, if they've got bottom pair, ace high, anything at all, you know what I'm talking about. These are the kind of players you wanna play consistently against. Once again, if you play online poker, you can use a HUD like Poker Tracker. Again, I'll have links for that in the description below. You can just look for players that have a VPIP of 40% or more. That's a guaranteed fish. Let's move on to point number three, and that is to never bluff the fish. Now, I want to start off by saying that the flop C bet that we just discussed, that to me is not a bluff. Now, we already talked about how you miss the flop two out of three times. So if we can make a small bet on the flop, it makes sense for us. We get a cheap price to try to get them out. What I'm really talking about is if you have nothing on the turn or the river, you should just check, especially against the bad players, the fishy players. So let's give you an example here. You raise up ace nine of diamonds on the button. A fish calls you in the big blind. Flop comes down with the eight of spades, five of clubs, and five of hearts. So we should make a C bet here. Once again, make a small bet. Maybe the pot's $10. Just bet $5 here. Try to get them out of there. But we're going to assume that they call in this hand. So the turn comes with the three of diamonds. Once again, we got nothing here. We got no draw. We got no pair. Guys, please just check fold in this situation. You're just going to be digging your own grave trying to bluff the fish. Now let's talk about the reverse scenario, and that is point number four, which is to always value bet the fish. Guys, there's a yin and a yang for everything in poker, and you want to understand your player type. This is the heart and soul of any winning poker strategy, as I discussed in my brand new Elite Poker Training University, 17 plus hours of advanced poker training, dozens and dozens of cheat sheets showing you how to beat small and mid stakes games. I'll include a link for that in the description below as well. Anyways, guys, a value bet is when you believe you are ahead in poker and therefore you want a call. And the beautiful thing about our fishy friends at the poker table who you're playing against is what do they love to do? They love to call, of course. It's their favorite thing in the world. They don't like to fold. Fish don't play poker to make disciplined folds. They want to get in there and try to hit whatever they can, whatever Miracle River card. And we're gonna discuss that in a second, by the way. So let's run you through an example once again. Same hand, you got Ace-9 of Diamonds, on the button, the fish calls in the big blind, same flop, eight, five, five, rainbow, meaning three different suits. And of course, there's no diamond on there. You make your continuation bet and they call. Now let's go to the turn this time, but change that turn card to a nine of hearts. Guys, this completely changes the situation here. Now we have top pair and we want to value bet. We want to make this player pay for whatever they have. They've got king high, they've got nine, seven for a gut shot straight draw. We're beating. 9-7, of course, because we have a better kicker with an ace. Whatever they're calling with, pocket fours, we want to make them pay. So again, let's just use a nice round number. Assume the pot is $10. Bet $8 here. Bet a big amount. Make them pay. Let's move on to my final point here. In order to win every poker hand or more poker hands is to never go on tilt. Guys, from having coached hundreds of players in small and mid stakes games specifically and having played millions and millions of hands myself, especially online, I know that the number one thing that holds people back at the poker table is not their strategy. It's actually all up here. It is when they lose control of their emotions at the poker table and start playing poorly, which is what we call tilt, which leads to making hopeless calls, playing all sorts of bad hands, making terrible bluffs that make no sense, and so on and so forth. Guys, you need to understand that bad beats, which is when you have the mathematical advantage in the hand and somebody gets lucky, they're going to happen. Bad players, like we just talked about, love to call with anything, so they're going to give you bad beats, just like the sun's also going to rise tomorrow. We need to just simply make peace with it and therefore not be surprised when it happens. We don't need to freak out emotionally and get all angry in the moment when we already know it's going to happen. Guys, when the bad players are calling you with their ace high or their bottom pair, they have 10% equity in the pot, 20% equity in the pot, and that means their odds to catch their quote unquote miracle card on the river. Guys, these are not insignificant odds. We shouldn't be surprised when somebody hits a 20% shot on the river. It's gonna come through one out of five times. So guys, we need to make peace with this. 
we need to play the game of poker for the long run and not get so emotionally invested and wrapped up in our short-term results. Guys, sometimes you're gonna have a session at the poker table and everything's going to go poorly for you. You're gonna lose a bunch of money. The best poker players in the world, this happens to them routinely. This is a built-in part of the game, this ability for the bad players to get lucky sometimes. But guys, believe me, if you use the strategies that I discussed in this video, they pay heavily for it in the long run. So guys, to sum up, make sure you use a tag strategy. Just download my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below if you wanna know what a complete, tight, and aggressive strategy is. Only play in fishy games. Never bluff the fish. Always value bet heavily versus the fish. And lastly, do not allow yourself to get emotionally unhinged when the fish hit their lucky card on the river against you as they absolutely will. So guys, like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. I hope this helps you start winning a few more poker hands and getting the real results that you deserve at the poker table. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will catch you next time.